Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by Sportsman's Warehouse, the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, and Avery Superstore. Hey, welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray. As we talk outdoors every Saturday morning for 90 minutes. Uh, this Saturday being the second Saturday, I'm back from Montana. Uh, appreciate uh, Bill Cooksey, Dave Gabbard, and Gene Smith filling in for me. Uh, last I was week. on too, and Ron Wong was in too, and uh, yep. it's the first show I think in all my years I didn't even call in, but I couldn't call in because I had no reception where I was, our cabin was. But uh, I tell you what, folks, if you ever have a chance, it's on your bucket list. Um, I've been to Yellowstone, I've been to Yosemite, I've been to uh, Jasper in Al- Alberta, I've been to a lot of different places. Uh, that going to the Sun Highway through Glacier National Park uh, was just amazing. And uh, great weather up there, wonderful folks, uh, had a wonderful time. But uh, appreciate uh, John Gordon coming in with us uh, this morning. And Ron Wong is in West Monroe, uh, Monroe, only somewhere. He's on the Ouachita River. I'm actually on, uh, I'm, well, right now I'm at Forest Site State Park. And boat is that in West Monroe or Monroe? West Monroe, Louisiana. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, pretty close to Ruston when you get down to that area and not too far from yeah. Grambling. You can go to all those places in North Louisiana. Uh, home of Glenn Harris. Right. I hope you have a chance to see Glenn Harris while you're down there. Uh, well, I hope so. Uh, yeah. I saw him the last time I was here earlier this year you better get when him. I was at Lake Darbone. Yeah, I know. And I was just waiting for you to say that word. That's uh, <laughs> That's, that's my favorite, uh, my favorite place. Let's let's talk to uh, both of you guys a little bit here during this section, as we call it, around the outdoors horn. And John, you talk about um, getting ready to go to the Dakotas for that first uh, show, TV show. Uh, for that will be for next twenty twenty. Is that right? <clears throat> yeah, that's correct, Larry. That uh, the the show uh, airs starting in July every year. Uh, the UTV July. does. Okay. Uh, we're on episode eleven right now, um, so we're just about through this season. How many uh, you do? The UTV. Thirteen episodes. So this one that you go to, where in Dakotas? South this will Dakota? be your Bismarck, North Dakota. Okay, Bismarck, and uh, this will be s- series one. I mean, uh, show well, this one. will be show one. Um, and, uh, I say it'll be you show rotate one. them around. You yeah, could, yeah, I mean, it just kind of depends on on what the. The, uh, Weather and the, <laughs> what the, well, the producer, you know how he wants to, you know, line them out. Uh, but I would think this would probably be the first show. Okay. We're uh, we're going to be up there with one of our uh, conservation managers and uh, For how some long? other do you folks. Well, we're going to start shooting. Um, oh, let's see. Actually, it'll be resident season only in North Dakota. Um, I got Fred Zink. Uh-huh. A lot of folks know Fred Zink yeah. out there in the waterfowl world. He's coming on as a co-host this year. Uh, because Plano Synergy and Zinc Calls is now a co-sponsor of the of the show, so yes, that's right. Uh, Freddie's coming on, and uh, but he actually won't be able to hunt the first couple of hunts. He's, um, not a resident. he's a non-resident, right? So that's one thing North Dakota does is uh, give the residents uh, first crack at them. Uh, but uh, yeah, well, we've what, got a bunch what, what of stuff lined if up. If we did that down here, <laughs> especially Arkansas, people yeah, would Arkansas throw it. You know, would, uh, it, it'd be contentious, it'd be to say contentious. the least. Now, so you've been on the job for how long now? Well, it's uh, coming up in October will be one year. I thought it. That's uh, so you've had a chance to experience this year. Uh, you like it? You like oh what man, you're doing? I, I love it. It's uh, you talk about a kid in a candy store. That's yeah. me with a TV show and a film series that you know that I get to uh, to put together, and it's uh, it's just fantastic. And and DU is a great organization. It I mean, is. great people involved in it. And, it, and and what Ducks Unlimited does for for not only waterfowl but for wildlife and clean water is amazing. Yeah, and so that'll be, then you'll eventually, have, you've already plotted out most of the shows? You, all, all the shows. Um, all the shows, yeah. have, have been sites have been selected. and uh, Right, we're, we're going to places like New York State, the St. Lawrence River, um, you know, uh, up there. Oh, with, wow. uh, yeah, it's a, there's a place it's with smallmouth up there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I knew Ron would like that. That's all I got to say. Yeah, yeah. Got that. Uh, Snake River in Idaho, another oh area we'll be at this year. Yeah. Uh, uh, back uh, Tombstone, Arizona. Tombstone, Be- Tombstone Arizona. Arizona. Wow, People don't cool. think of Arizona and waterfowl at all, but there, there's really some really great hunting there, and very very little pressure. Very few duck hunters there. Uh, you know, we'll end up Tombstone, down here in Arkansas. Arizona. Tombstone, Arizona. That's where we're going to stay. I got to watch and, that one. I, you I, know, 
uh, the areas we'll be hunting down there, you they tell me you can see the Sierra Ma, you know, Nevada oh, yes, Mountains in, in Mexico, south. so it's yeah. south Arizona. No, I don't think that um, is, is ducks. But you he know? said, you know, one thing about it is, you know, the the wetlands and, and, the, and the water that's there, I mean, the birds are concentrated in it. And so, I mean, the hunting can be fantastic. Wow. Okay. Well, that's uh, John Gordon talking about his uh, job with uh, Ducks Unlimited uh, and the TV show when uh, – we appreciate John taking time to be with us when he can, and we'll continue to report on, on his uh, travels. And, of course, uh, the man that travels the most is uh, on the other end of the line because uh, even though John's going to New York, Ryan is, is going to all those crappie trail events where you, you, you can't get there without Ron. Uh, they don't start without Ron. So, uh, Seems to be the deal. They don't start without Ron. No, and we don't either. Uh, right here. But uh, So, now, now, so Ron, this tournament this weekend, and I want to say one thing. We want to take a little break here from this uh, and bring Ron in because we lost, uh, a, a, we lost an, an, a, an amazing man uh, with a recent passing. Uh, and I'm going to let Ron talk a little bit about this because uh, Ron had a – personal relationship and, and, and knew uh, everybody knew this gentleman we're going to talk about but uh, t- talk about uh, your you and uh, Mr. Virgils well Larry thank you uh, Nick Virgus was probably one, he is one of Memphis's was one of Memphis's biggest ambassadors to the world yeah and a a huge philanthropist in a lot of different ways and uh, a lot of people don't know uh, some things that nick did when he had time to do but he loved the outdoors he loved to dove hunt he loved to fish and he especially loved to brim fish and uh you had a chance uh, to spend some time with him uh, about a a month ago, I think, or something. About like that. a month ago, he was. Uh, he had just finished his chemo treatments from cancer and was feeling pretty good. And I said, "Let's go brim fishing." Uh, yeah. So off we went to go brim fishing. So long story short, we filled up a forty-eight igloo ice chest <laughs> of brim. Yeah. In about two hours, uh, and uh, we just had to quit. And, uh, but we had a great time, but, uh, he was a very, very dear friend of mine. And, uh, whenever he could fish, he would call me and I'd say, yeah, let's go fishing. But what Nick has done for the city of Memphis and a lot of the stuff is behind the scenes. Um, for instance, you know, Jack Sammons was trying to get Southwest Airlines in back into Memphis to service the airport there. And so Jack uh, uh, took him down to the rendezvous one day. <laughs> That's a good and, place. And uh, these executives, the CEO for Southwest Airlines and a couple of other uh, big-time people with him, loved the food and everything. Well, Nick took it upon himself to send him a care package oh, once yeah. a week for a month. For a month? <laughs> just to convince him, you know. Memphis is really a good place. And, of course, you know, now we see the fruits of that labor Yeah. In, with uh, uh, Southwest Airline. But, you know, he was a very big supporter for Make-A-Wish here in the Mid-South. Yeah, he was. He's instrumental in helping raise uh, over $3.2 million in the last eight years. Wow, wow. For him. And so and- now he's also... Did a lot with Southern Rains before. Yeah, he did. Uh, when they first started, uh, Larry, you know, you know a little bit about horses. Yeah. But horse therapy for kids with disabilities does an amazing, amazing job. I was introduced to Southern Rains through Nick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He got me out there to cook for one of their galas to help him, and it was amazing. Um, See those you know, kids. So my, yeah. 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 My heart goes out to his wife, Jenny, and his five kids. Uh, yeah. He and, got, uh, uh, and the funeral uh, under, the funeral was a, a, a very uh, touching tribute to him, I understand, uh, at, at Hope. Uh-huh. And then they had uh, visitation with everybody there. But uh, a great loss for our community. And I wanted Ron to share a few 
thoughts on that because uh, of Nick's uh, friendship with Ron. Of course, I don't think Nick, uh, he never, he, he, he could easily make friends with a lot of people, you know, just because uh, even Absolutely. though he was uh, uh, so well known, he, he would talk to anybody. I mean, so that's, Absolutely. Uh, and that's one mm-hmm. of the good things. Uh, so we wanted to push that in there, but uh, I know, Ron, you're in, in Monroe and, and you say that next, uh, in, what's it, March or something like that? It's going to be uh, the, 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 the. It will be the championship for 2020. You know, it's kind of like a. Um, the classic hills. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. They go and fish a year and then they have their classic. Well, much in the same with the American Crappie Trail here. Uh, the, this is their next to the last qualifying tournament. Okay. And uh, right now. Ronnie Caps and our friend Steve Coleman huh. are on top uh, for Angler of the Year uh, in points, but there's some people that are fairly close to them, and so it's going to be interesting. And then, of course, next month in October, last part of October, they will finish their season at famous Grenada Lake. Grenada Lake, and then in Enid and next, uh, next for the championship, right? So, uh, Sardis Lake for the I mean, Sardis, excuse me. Yeah, Sardis for the championship. All right, Ron. Right. Let's take a break. We're going to wrap this baby up and talk a little. Uh, you know, Mossy Oak is into so much. Uh, and I can remember when Toxie and uh, and all the guys down there, Bill Suggs and uh, Cuz and all of them were getting that thing started. And now Mossy Oak Properties. So we're going to talk to the director of new business. You wonder what that title means. We're going to find right back on David Hawley. We come right back on Outdoors with Larry Ray and close out today's show. We'll be right back. <laughs> 